you might already be aware of how to use decorators and how they work, but in this brief video, I'll give you a, a good introduction to how some of the inner workings of decorators are uh, working together to give you a good experience and then create a utility that will handle exceptions for us. Now, handling exceptions uh, can get tricky and I always encourage you to handle exceptions um, whenever you need to deal specifically with them without ignoring them. But sometimes when building command line tools, it's useful to have something that will do the hard work for us instead of repeating ourselves. And that's what we're gonna do today in this video. All right, so let's uh, work a little bit with decorators. Uh, but before we get into decorators, let's um, play a little bit around what decorators are, how they work, if you're not very sure how how they um, how they actually do all of their magic. When I first encountered decorators, uh, they they looked <laughs> kind of like intimidating. It was new syntax back then, and so I felt like the the syntax was like kind of kind of weird. In essence, a decorator or the default, the basic um, description of a decorator is that it's a function. So let's quickly create a function here. It's a function. Um, let's call this. Uh, parent and it's a function that takes a function. So when I say here, um, uh, how about uh, func uh, for function and then uh, we do some, some something here like some pre-processing. So say for example, we can say something like the name. So we can say print and uh, we can use an F string here. We can say print the the function uh, name. Um, we can say uh, function name is like that. And I'll tell you exactly what we're doing in a second. And then um, you can you have a couple of options. You can you can either execute, you can run, you can call the function that you're receiving, or you can uh, do some uh, some lazy evaluation. So you could you could just return the function, the function as you're receiving it uh, here in the argument, or you can call it. Like let's um, let's use this example for now. And now we're gonna uh, call that. And now we're going to create another function here. We're gonna say say for example, this is a main function, uh, nothing special. And we're gonna say uh, print. Um, this is the main function uh, running, right? Okay, so we're gonna do that, and then uh, we're gonna call that. But uh, what happens when we're decorating? So, so um, before we get into the actual syntax, let's uh, let's play our, a little bit around the parent function. So the parent function is going to be the decorator, right? And we're gonna decorate main. So let's do it without using the syntax for decorating. So that is, is effectively doing uh, doing this. I'm going to say, I'm gonna call parent and I'm gonna pass main. So that is how it works. Parent is a decorator and it's going to receive a function and the function is called main. So if I run this, it's going to say function name is main and the return value, the return thing, object that we're gonna get is the actual main function that we passed in. Kind of, kind of like a little bit weird, huh? Because we're, we have something that is saying, that is um, uh, giving us some information, doing some pre-processing before uh, the function is, is getting called and is returning some information. But it's also returning the function. So you might say, I was like, well, why, why would that be uh, needed? Well, sometimes, uh, decorators are are doing some pre-processing, and it allows you to do some um, uh, to do that pre-processing to do some other work, and then call the the function. So if we wanted to to do some pre-processing, uh, say for example, we're creating an account or something. Uh, let's call this um, uh, lazy main, and we're gonna do that. So once we do this, we're going to get the, the printing. So function name is main and nothing else. So I'm going to run this. And now lazy main is actually the main function that has been decorated with these. So now I can call, uh, I can call lazy main here and it will all work. So let's do that. And now I'm calling lazy main and this is the main function running. 
So that's that's the the reason why you may want to return a function and, and you might like if you're going deep into decorators and seeing that it's returning the function or returning the uh, uh, nested decorator that's that's why it's making it lazy. Now uh, this is all good but we haven't seen the actual syntax. So let's decorate let's decorate this guy with parent like that. Oops, uh, not this button. So let's let's uh, decorate it like this, and let's just uh, uh, clear this one out. Let's run this, uh, and now let's call let's call main and see what happens. So now that main is decorator de decorated, we can uh, we can just uh, call it and get some output. So now this is not the right uh, way. So of creating an actual decorator. So we need to make some changes here because now this is not just a function that returns another function. We need to make a nested function here and we're going to make it like so. So now we have this decorate uh, function is going to print, is going to re also return the, the function here and this is going to make it lazier. So if I run this again, then we are going to decorate main and we do it like that and function name is main. Now, just by defining this, see how eager parent is? It will, it will run that and then finally we'll run the main and this is the main function running. So the main function is already decorated. The behavior has already happened, but this is not exactly entirely useful other than to know how the inner workings of a decorator uh, is uh, happening. Um, there's a there's a nice there's a nice way and there's a nice example that I like to work with, which is um, creating a decorator that that handles some exceptions uh, for me. So let's um, let me go and create a file. Let's just say, for example, um, let's just say here in decorators, this is empty, perfect. So I'm going to create a decorator that is going to catch and, and handle some examples for me. So uh, the idea is, let's create a doc string here. The idea is that you will you will run, uh, say for example, main.py, which, uh, which is a function and some error happens and and then you get like a nice um, a nice printout like a nice error message saying um, and then and then like what what the error what the error is error message here and and just for a couple of uh, types of errors so this is very useful when you're dealing with command line tools so if this is not the terminal if you're if you're doing something like uh, python main.py like that, and then and then you get that instead of like a huge traceback. Now, tracebacks tracebacks are good. Error messages are great, but we are going to create one that handles a known a known error, a known problem. So let's create the 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 decorator pretty quickly, and we are going to create a double nested decorator because we're gonna pass some things around. I'm gonna call these catches and we're going to require an argument. So decorators that require arguments are, are kind of special and they need this uh, nested, nested function uh, thing. So we're going to do def decorate. I'm going to call this F and now this decorate is going to receive the uh, function that we're going to decorate. And now the, the new func is going to allow any argument, any keyword argument, and we're going to do a try except here. So we're going to do try return uh, the function that we're decorating uh, with whatever arguments and keyword arguments we're receiving. And we're going to do except catch. So catch is going to be, so let's do this. Catch is going to be, um, catch is a tuple of uh, exceptions uh, like type error uh, and uh, or runtime error, runtime error, right? So, so that allows you to pass in one or multiple exceptions and then handle them. Um, except catch 
as E, and then we're going to print um, just a very basic, very basic message. We're gonna say um, uh, uh, caught an error. An error. I'm gonna say the error is. Uh, I'm gonna call wrapper on E. So that will allow me to get like a representation, a text representation of the actual exception and the message. And next, so now we're we're three we're three levels in. What we need to do here, uh, this new func like this does the execution is trying to return the function. So nothing happens here. The return is happening already here in line sixteen. Uh, below these, we're going to return new func. That is this guy over here in line fourteen. This return new func means that decorate is going to return uh, this function body. And outside of that, we're going to return decorate. So this is going to make it, this is going to make it uh, really, uh, really lazy. Okay, really, really lazy. So now what we need to do, uh, when we call catches uh, decorate in a decorated way, it's going to, um, it's going to do, uh, it's not going to affect behavior. It's going to be lazy. Remember when we're doing the, when we're here, uh, this was like very eager and things were happening. Well, this way of doing things is going to make it very lazy. Now let's, um, let's go to, uh, to see how this works. So if I have a, say, uh, let's create a new file and let's call it uh, main.py. So I'm going to say main.py. And then in main.py, I'm going to say from decorators import catches, which is our, our um, decorator. And then we're going to say, um, well, let's, let's first write the, 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 main, the main function, right? So I'm going to say main, oops, main is going to take, um, is going to take some arguments from the command line, uh, from the command line. This is going to make like a very, very basic command line tool without any frameworks or libraries. And we're going to call it from Python on the, on the terminal on the, as, as a command line tool. So we're going to say, um, if, uh, arguments, very simple. We're going to just print out the arguments. We're going to say print, uh, we have some arguments and we are going to actually be printing them out uh, with an F string here, arguments. Uh, else, like if we don't have any arguments, we are going to say, uh, we are going to raise a runtime error. Uh, like that. And uh, how about if we, yeah, we, we, we can do that. So now this is the behavior. Um, we are going to do our magical here. If dunder name is main, which indicates that Python is going to be run on, on the terminal as a command line tool is going to, is going to run this file. We're going to say main, um, what we're going to import says import says to pass the arguments. And here is, is the arg b. Um, I think, I think this should do it. So if we run it, uh, it run, it run main.py. And then, and then we say, we have some arguments. The one argument is this thing, but this is kind of like a lie because like, uh, this is not the argument that I'm looking for. Uh, we are going to change these to length of arguments is more than one, right? If, if it's more than one, uh, then we have some arguments or otherwise no arguments passed in because we call these main up by without arguments here. And by default sees that argv will always have like the first argument is the name and path of or, or path of the file. So let's just run this again. Now we get an exception. Okay. Uh, argument, um, no arguments passed in and I'm raising a runtime error. So similar behavior to what you would be doing in a command line tool, you're getting into a little bit of trouble and that's, that's what's uh, happening uh, here. Um, okay. So let's, let's use our decorator then. So what happens if we're using a decorator? So we're going to use catches and we're going to say, um, runtime error. 
uh, there. We, I need to use a comma, so like um, to uh, signal this is a tuple of one item. And uh, let's run it here. Um, and we're going to say, um, we are going to save these and um, we are going to look at catches over here, decorate, caught an error. Um, how about we add, I think we can add, I think we can add something else here. Let's, let's do type error, which is for kicks. Um, we're going to do that. And we can try and run it again. All right, so so uh, we I was not getting any any errors before. So let's leave it before. Like I was just getting confused because I was seeing all of these um, uh, tracebacks. Kind of nasty to have some some tracebacks and and getting errors. So let me do clear. All right, clean slate, no arguments. I'm going to run this, and I'm getting the decorator working for me. So see, I don't have to do that try except. Usually people tend to do try accepts right here if they want to catch some very well-known um, exception. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the power of the, 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 uh, the decorator called catches to do that uh, for me right there. And it's like, ooh, runtime, caught an error, runtime error norm. I mean, you can, you can format this in any way you want and you can make it nicer for the user. Uh, again, this is not meant to catch every single exception in the universe and, and omit tracebacks or, or, and I'm not saying definitely that tracebacks are, are bad, tracebacks are, are good. Some, some positive enhancements that we could do here in our decorators file, let me close this out, would be to add some logging statements. Hey, log, log this exception to a file. Um, so if you're using the logging module, that could be, I'm going to comment it out so I don't, I don't get the syntax errors here, but it could be logging that exception. And then you can say, um, uh, unexpected, uh, error in uh, CLI. And what that uh, line does, if, if you have logging configured correctly, is it will use the exception and it will, uh, put the trace back, the full trace back as logging. So that is how you can manage to, um, use a nice decorator here. Uh, oh, let's 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 try one more thing. Let's try it out um, by raising a different, like I said, type error. Right? We need type error. So if I do type error here, uh, the the thing that will happen is that uh, these will uh, these will create the uh, the exception, but we can pass multiple because I'm allowing to pass multiple uh, exceptions. Now I can say type error, and now this will uh, no longer be a problem. So if I run it again, uh, type error, no arguments passed in. So there you go. This is very useful. Um, I'm going to leave the example repository so you can take a look at this uh, and follow up. Uh, but that's how you would be using a, a, a decorator to do stuff for you so that you don't have to repeat it all over, especially if you want to handle similar behavior elsewhere, a decorator is going to be your friend. So now you know how to, um, how to implement a decorator, how to implement a decorator that is lazy, that is not going to be eager, that accepts arguments and that uses those arguments to affect some behavior.